Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've now been making videos long enough to where I've got an update to a video that was an update to a video. And this all has to do with something working its way through the court system. I've done other updates before. Something happened in the news and then something else happened a week later. I'm talking about a case working its way through the legal system, was taken to the Court of Appeals, then was sent to the Supreme Court of Michigan, and the Michigan Supreme Court just ruled on it. So I'm going to put in the description below the video the previous two videos to this story. So if you want to follow it from the beginning, you can do that. But if you've been following this channel for a while, you may have seen the previous videos. It has to do with the snowmobile accident. And the question is, is a snowmobile an automobile or a motor vehicle for the purposes of governmental immunity. And while that might seem like the kind of thing which, back when I started my channel, if you said, Steve, you're going to be talking a lot about governmental immunity, I'd be like, no way. Who wants to hear about that? Turns out people are interested in this. And Michigan loses key immunity decision in snowmobile crash. This is from ClickOnDetroit.com, which is WDIV out of Detroit's website, Channel 4, the NBC affiliate there. A snowmobile driven by a state employee is a motor vehicle under Michigan law, the state Supreme Court said. A key decision that could make taxpayers liable in a crash that injured two people. But the question is, isn't that fair? In other words, if a government employee is driving around in a car and they are doing so negligently and they harm somebody, well, then the government's on the hook for that. Should it be any different because it's a snowmobile? And I agree with this decision. The court heard arguments in January and decided just a couple days ago to let a court of appeals opinion stand. So, in other words, the state appealed the court of appeals ruling. And the Supreme Court says, we heard your case, but we're not going to reverse it. We're going to leave it as it is. The issue is whether the Department of Natural Resources, the DNR, could claim governmental immunity and avoid legal responsibility for an incident on Penny Bridge Road in Antrim County, up north, Lower Peninsula. Uh, Audrey West was thrown into a river while her father was pinned under a snowmobile in 2018. They said they were forced to swerve when two DNR officers on snowmobiles were on the same road going in the wrong direction. So they swerved to avoid them. And that's the allegation. By the way, a lot of people are going to say, but Steve, what if that's not true? Well, that's what the trial is for. So these people who were involved in an accident that appears to have been caused, in their opinion, by DNR officers going the wrong way with snowmobiles, they want to sue. The state has said, you can't sue us because they weren't on motor vehicles. They were on snowmobiles. (laughs) I think most people would go, what? Come on. Uh, There was one judge on the Supreme Court who was the only member to write a dissent He said a snowmobile should not be lumped in with a car or truck uh, because they're different. He says the dissimilarities are striking because snowmobiles typically need considerable snow and don't have tires, a roof, or certain safety equipment. And the logic behind saying the state has governmental immunity for all kinds of stuff, but there's certain exceptions to it. One exception being the negligent operation of a motor vehicle. The point is that most of the governmental immunity is aimed at covering discretionary acts taken by government agents. When it comes to the operation of an automobile or a motor vehicle, really, is that discretionary? Is that really something that, that, that you know, shouldn't they be required to operate a vehicle with due care like everyone else, especially when they share the roadway with us? And you're going to say, but Steve, this isn't a roadway. This is a trail. Exactly. Why would a government employee be allowed to drive a government snowmobile negligently and say, well, I'm the government. That's what we do. (laughs) In a separate but related case that got combined on appeal, a man was severely injured when his snowmobile collided with a vehicle driven by a DNR ranger who was grooming a ski trail in Chippewa County in 2018. The ranger was driving a Gator utility vehicle. And their argument there was, well, that's not an automobile either, a motor vehicle. That's a utility vehicle. And the Supreme Court said, no, 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 that's also a vehicle for the purposes of the governmental immunity exception. And so they affirmed the decision by the appeals court, which said the utility vehicle, like a snowmobile, doesn't trigger governmental immunity in an injury lawsuit. So that's a rather short story. 
And I knew that coming in. So I thought it'd be good at this point to talk about what the exceptions are to governmental immunity, at least in Michigan. And, and many states will be similar to this, but they might have slightly different exceptions. But in Michigan, there's actually a statute that says, in essence, you cannot sue the state or state actors for doing their jobs and claim that, oh, you know, he, he, he did this and he shouldn't have done that. And it's, it's in his discretion to do that. And so the point is that, that they said, look, we're going to protect state actors, people who work for the state. We're going to protect them from lawsuits and, and so on, liability, except in certain exceptions that seem to make sense. So number one on most lists is defective highways. You're driving down the road, you come around a curve, and a big chunk of pavement's just missing, and it causes an accident, you get injured. Well, that defective highway is something that you could sue the state for, or whoever's in charge of that piece of highway, you can sue the government for, uh, as long as you can show there was some negligence involved. So I'm not going to get into this very heavily, but obviously if somebody came by in the middle of the night with a backhoe and removed a piece of pavement, and 30 seconds later you ran over it and got hurt, well, the state could say, look, we had no notice of that. We weren't negligent in any way. Uh, who, who could have seen that coming? But a defective highway, and most of these things are going to be triggered by the negligence of somebody. So if the state or whoever's overseeing a piece of roadway is negligent in their oversight and you get injured, you can sue, and governmental immunity will not protect them. The second one that's often listed is the negligent operation of a government-owned automobile government-owned automobile. So you're driving along the road and you get a car accident caused by somebody else. And if that person is driving a government vehicle and they're a government employee, why would that matter? Why would that matter at all? Who cares? They should still be driving with due care. So obviously it makes sense to say, well, we're going to hold them liable for that because it's not like they're making discretionary decisions about their job while they're driving. They're just driving. They're driving. So Negligent operation of a government-owned automobile, likewise, is an exception to governmental immunity. So that's one of the reasons that you'll often hear about police being sued after a police chase, where somebody gets injured in a police chase, and the question is, did the police officer or officers, were they negligent in their operation of their motor vehicle or vehicles? And so if you could prove that they were, then theoretically you can go after them. But if they go to dismiss the case and just go, hey, governmental immunity, well, there's an exception. The negligent operation of government-owned automobiles. Number three, a dangerous or defective condition in a public building. So let's suppose you decided to go to City Hall today to go talk to them about something. You walk around the corner and there's a big hole in the floor and you fall through it and you get injured. Now, again, it makes sense. Why would their buildings be held to any different standard than anybody else's buildings? You walk into a private business, you fall through a hole in the floor, you can sue them. You walk into a governmental building and you fall through the hole in the floor, you should be able to sue them also. And so the point is that that makes sense. And again, it has little to do with any discretionary decisions made by people doing their jobs. It, it would appear to be just negligence on the part of whoever's in charge of that building. Okay. The fourth one on the list, it's kind of funny. It says proprietary functions, proprietary functions of the state. And I couldn't even find any examples of it. And I found several websites that talk about this and go, there's very few cases on this because most people who try this fail. But proprietary functions would be where the state is doing something for profit and they're making money doing it and it's not supported by tax dollars. And at that point, if they're doing a proprietary function and somebody gets hurt due to the negligence of that person or department or whatever it is, they could sue. And I don't have any examples for you. I couldn't find any. <laughs> Hospitals, hospitals. If you go into a hospital and a doctor or someone there commits malpractice, medical malpractice, obviously, if it's a for-profit hospital, you can sue them for medical malpractice. If it's a government hospital, you can too. Because again, why would it make a difference about the standard of care you receive at a hospital, whether it's run by a corporation or a nonprofit or the government? The standard of care should be the same at all of them. So medical malpractice, which of course is a certain type of negligence in a medical setting at a hospital. So if the government runs the hospital, state government runs the hospital, then the governmental immunity will not protect them from medical malpractice claims. And then one other little exception is sewer overflow or backup. Sewer overflow or backup. 
if it's caused by negligence. So let's suppose you own a home, it's connected to the city sewer, and one day you wake up and you hear a strange gurgling from the basement. And you open up the door and there's six feet of sewage down there. If you walk down there to check it and stood on the bottom, it'd be about this deep. Sewage, sewage. And you find out that uh, somebody wasn't doing their job and they decided to cut some corners and they were negligent and their negligence caused that sewage to back up or overflow into your basement. Uh, the government that runs that sewage system would not be immune from lawsuits if you can prove negligence. So again, getting back to the original case here, there's two cases actually. And one was somebody on a snowmobile who says they were run off the trail by state agents going the wrong direction on the trail on a snowmobile. The second person says that he was involved in an accident on the trail, he was in a snowmobile, and the state employee was on an all-terrain vehicle, or a UTV, ATV, one of those things. And they both filed lawsuits claiming negligence on the part of the state employees, and the state defended it by saying, you can't sue us because a snowmobile and an ATV are not motor vehicles or government-owned automobiles. They are, they are snowmobiles and they're ATVs. They're, they're, that's, and so the state Supreme Court has upheld the appeals court opinion that they might not be cars in the traditional sense, but as far as being an automobile with respect to the duty of care or standard of care you have while operating it, it makes just as much sense to call them automobiles. So what this means is these cases will go back to the trial courts and the plaintiffs will be given their day in court where they can then argue to a jury and say these injuries were caused by the negligence of the person from the state on the state-owned snowmobile or ATV. A jury does not have to believe them. A jury could come back and say, no, we don't believe you. We'll give you nothing. Might happen. You never know. But the point is they simply wanted their day in court, and up until now they haven't gotten it. So they're going to get their day in court. But the governmental immunity in Michigan covers these things that are exceptions. Defective highways, negligent operation of a government-owned automobile, dangerous or defective conditions in a public building, proprietary functions of the state, hospitals and medical care, and sewer overflow and back up. So there you go. Uh, if there are further updates on this, like if it goes to trial and there's a big verdict, I'll cover that too. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I will keep preaching this to myself and others. There are no problems, only projects.